Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I'll briefly talk about the best possible way to reach out to a professor or anyone else when you need their help or some guidance. Now, what prompted this video is because, you know, I field quite a few queries from people from all across the world, but also mostly from my native country, Pakistan. And I've realized that uh, most of the times people who reach out to me are, of course, they are sincere and they are earnest, but they probably have not been trained by their professors or teachers about how to reach out to someone, especially if you need some guidance about your future or if you need some help about or with your projects. So first, a few not to do's, right? One, do not reach out to people through Facebook or WhatsApp or Twitter, right? and say, I need help with this, can you guide me? Especially if they don't know you, because obviously these media, social media are useful, but they are not necessarily the ideal tools for formally reaching out to someone. One thing that you could do is, you could reach out to someone if you are connected with them on LinkedIn, Facebook, right? And introduce yourself. I am Masood Raja. I'm working on an MPhil in English. Uh, would it be possible to contact you through your email to see if you can guide me about my project? So that way they know that you are requesting help, but you don't want to do it back and forth on WhatsApp or LinkedIn. So if they feel like they could help you, they will send you their email and then you correspond with them with their email. Another thing that I've noticed is that people would uh, reach out to me, uh, like, can you tell me about scholarship possibilities for PhDs, right? So what they're basically doing is farming out their own work to me. Obviously, I don't have a list of scholarships, right? Uh, and this is something that they could very easily search, right? They could just put in PhD scholarships in United States, right? They could even do a search on YouTube to find out what's the best way of getting a scholarship for doctoral studies in United States. Um, so instead of sending me or someone else a query which you could search yourself, right? What it comes across to people is that, okay, this person has not done their research and they are just asking me to do the research because I mean, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna look it up too. But I mean, on an aside, all research universities in United States worth their name, fund their PhDs. So a better way of reaching out to someone would be you do your research and you say, hey, you know, Dr. Raja, could I email you about my project? Then you e get my consent, email me, and then say, I've researched these five universities. This is what I'm planning to study. Which one do you think would suit me the best? And maybe there, if I have some expertise, I'll be able to answer your question. But what it comes across to the recipient is that you're a serious candidate, right? And that you've done your preliminary work and now you're seeking some advanced level guidance, right? Similarly, uh, sometimes I've noticed that, uh, you know, people would watch a video on my YouTube channel, like on hybridity, right? And then in the comments, they would suggest I should make some video on, you know, colonialism as well. So what that means is that they didn't really research the channel, right? Because if they had, they would find out that there are like 600 videos on the channel. So another way, to, another thing to keep in mind is that before sending your materials to anyone, seek their consent first, right? 
would it be okay if I shared my project with you or will you have time to guide me with this project? And that way the recipient, whosoever they may be, they, they are primed for it, they have agreed to it and they have looked at their time and committed to, to helping you. Another thing uh, that I have noticed is a couple of people in the last few years have asked me if I would recommend them to any of my colleagues. Now, obviously I cannot recommend them because I don't know them, I don't know their work, I have not read their work. A better way would be to reach out to me or someone else, introduce yourself, let me get to know you, right? Share your CV, your writings, and then broach the subject of, Dr. Raja, do you know someone at this university or can you recommend someone who can guide me better? So that way, you know, you've established a relationship the person you're contacting at least knows you by name and then you've taken some steps to inform them even more about yourself. So I understand uh, what is causing this because we now live in this instantaneous world, right? Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram. And people don't even write full sentences, right? They just send a query and they expect an immediate response but in most cases, if you're asking for extensive help, advanced help, specialized help, the steps to that is building a relationship, right? Getting to know the person you're going to contact, but also introducing yourself to them through proper channels, right? And, and I'm not saying, you know, be, obiscuous or some, no, nothing of that sort. But being formal and professional is, is the first step. So these are like some of my thoughts that keep uh, coming up every time someone reaches out to me. So let me sum it up. First of all, do not send extensive queries to anyone through Facebook or WhatsApp or even LinkedIn. Reach out to them through these media, but ask them if it is okay for them to share their email with you. And if they do, then through that email, introduce yourself, introduce your work, and ask if they can help you with that project. But in the process, do your research first. So if you're sending an email, read it to yourself and see what is it that I'm requesting here that I could have found out myself. Eliminate that, right? Then also see what is it in your email that would force the other person to do some extra work. You know, look up things. If it is not within their immediate repertoire, then you are asking them to do something for you, right? So see that you can word it in a way where it comes across really clear that you have done your research, but maybe if they guided you a little more, you could reach a better result, right? That way, you know, you are likely to develop a long-term better relationship with a person who helps you. And most importantly, after someone has helped you, right? Send them a note, thank them, right? Uh, it's polite, it's the good thing to do, right? But pragmatically, you might need them some other day again. So do not get involved in this use and dispose mindset. I know that's the kind of world in which we live in. But the idea is to build a relationship. And if someone helps you, thank them for it. Even if they cannot help you, right? Thank them for at least responding to your email. That way you've developed a polite professional relationship 
for the long term and even if nothing comes out of it at least on a human level you have been decent and nice to another human being so these are some of my thoughts on this topic i do have a couple of videos i think there is one on the channel that explains how to ask someone to be your fulbright mentor you can apply the same thing to anything else how to ask someone to be your dissertation director how to ask someone to be uh, your recommender uh, all of those roughly would follow the same kind of formal process. That's all I have. I hope this is useful to you. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed something and you would like me to elaborate a little further. I can obviously do that. I am deeply grateful for your uh, support. Uh, if you have a moment, please do subscribe to the channel and pass this on to others so that more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much and as always, peace and love.